My name is uh, Dr. Rolal Farah. I am a Palestinian American physician in Houston, Texas. I have expertise in women's health and health policy. My father, as you mentioned, was born in Khan Yunus and my mother in Gaza City. And um, the Farah family actually is one of the largest families in Khan Yunus with over 12,000 family members there and thousands more around the world. We have lived in Gaza for centuries. We are the indigenous people of the land there. My goal today is to share with you the devastating and horrific impact of Israel's war on Gaza on the women and children in my family from the perspective of a physician, a woman, a mother, and a Palestinian in order to give real context and meaning to today's discussion. The stories that I share with you are tragic and deeply personal, but they need to be heard in order to understand the magnitude of suffering, trauma, and terror that my family members have experienced. Since the 7th of October, actually now over 150 family members, since I wrote that bio sketch, it's now 150 family members have been murdered by Israel's assault on Gaza, by Israeli bombardment, by sniper fire, and by the denial of humanitarian aid, including food, water, electricity, shelter, and medical care. It is imperative to understand the historical context of this brutal war as well. My family has endured a 50 year violent occupation by Israel and a blockade that has forced them to live in an open air prison in conditions that were already designated as a humanitarian disaster. In other words, the women and the children in my family have already experienced significant trauma and brutality prior to October of 2023. The plight of women and children in Gaza and in my family, in the Fara family, is nothing short of humanitarian catastrophe. Of the 150 family members killed, over 90 were women and children. Many women have been wi widowed, many children have been orphaned. Virtually all women and children in my family have been displaced to the south due to the destruction of their homes. The women and children in my family have endured massacres of entire nuclear multi-generational families by Israeli airstrikes of their homes. In late October, uh, in October, my cousin Jamal al farah and his wife Nihad were sheltering with their entire family uh, when an Israeli strike destroyed their home. Nihad survived, but she witnessed the death of her son Tawfiq, and, uh, who was a dentist, and his pregnant wife Dana, and their two beautiful daughters Reem and Hala. Her granddaughter Reem's wedding actually had been planned for the day that they were murdered. Nihad also witnessed the death of her brother-in-law Isam, along with his wife Samad, and their three daughters Rasul, Tukha, and Nadian. And so his entire family was wiped from the civil registry. Nihad suffered traumatic injuries and had to endure the amp amputation of her limb in addition to witnessing the death of her family. So here I share some pictures of the extended family as well as one of their daughters, Nahyan, and Dina, the wife of Tofik, who was pregnant when she was killed. Children in my family have endured the murder of their parents and horrific injuries from their massacres as well. In late October, 2023, an Israeli airstrike hit the home of my father's first cousin, Aziz, who's pictured there along with his children, um, and his brother Hatim and his brother-in-law, along with their wives uh, and children. They were sheltering together in one home and tragically massacred at night while asleep. The three fathers were killed along with 14 other members of the family, including seven of their children and their three wives. This is a picture of 10-year-old Hamza. On the left, you see a picture of him with his two younger siblings who were, who were killed in the, mass the massacre. Hamza survived the massacre, but he sustained critical injuries and he was taken to a nearby hospital when he underwent surgery. This is his picture in the hospital that was posted by other family members. And they had written that he had spent the remaining hours of his life in agony. He cried out incessantly for his deceased family and endured horrific pain due to the shortage of pain medications. He died a few days later alone and in agony. I think about him often. There really is no circumstance in this world that can justify the immeasurable suffering of this innocent child. Here's a picture of six-year-old San al Farah, who was murdered in her home along with family members. A picture of beautiful Sena wearing a Disney princess dress next to a picture of her dead body went viral on social media. Her photo captures the beauty and the innocence of children. But by virtue of being a Palestinian child in Gaza, she was not offered the same protection from war crimes that other children in the West are. Women and children in my family have endured relentless indiscriminate bombing that has destroyed virtually all of their homes, forcibly displacing them to evacuation camps in the South where they live in catastrophic conditions with no access to clean water, food, electricity, and medical care. I would like to share the tragic story 
of Iman al farra the pregnant mother of nine young children. On December 17th, 2023, her husband, Sabri Abdullah al farra was murdered in his home by an Israeli airstrike along with her nine children. They were buried under the rubble of their home for several days before anyone could recover them. Iman survived and she was forced to evacuate to a camp in Rafah. She gave birth to a baby boy with no access to clean water, electricity, and medical care. Her newborn son died 20 days later on January 28th from the cold and the harsh conditions in the camp. In what world is it acceptable for a pregnant mother to endure so much pain, loss, and tragedy? Humanity has indeed failed the women and children of Gaza. Women in my family like Iman and across Gaza have been subject, subjected to either a complete lack of or inadequate reproductive health care. My first cousin posted on Facebook that her neighbor down the street had just given birth on the rubble of her destroyed home, asking if anyone in the area could help provide her with clothing and supplies for the newborn infant. My first cousin in California is in regular contact with her sisters in Gaza who have reported that they have not had feminine hygiene products since the beginning of the Israeli attack on Gaza, increasing the risk of reproductive and urinary tra tract infections in young women. Women and children of my family have also been denied access to the most basic of humanitarian needs by the state of Israel. One family member texted, we have been sleeping without food for 24 hours at a time. We have not seen flour, meat, vegetables, or fruits for three months now. They are using animal feed to make bread and recycling water. My first cousin, Muna, sent a picture of her two and four-year-old daughters just last week. It was heartbreaking to see that her daughters were wasted and cachectic, which are medical signs for severe malnutrition. They have been surviving on canned beans and eat one meal per day, if at all any meals. Water contamination has caused severe gastrointestinal illnesses with an entire family recently suffering from hepatitis A infection, women and children included. Many of our family members have died due to an inability to access critical medical care. Here's a picture of 12-year-old Abdul Rahim al farra He was walking to the only restroom available in his evacuation camp when he was injured by an Israeli missile. He died en route because there was no functional hospital. He was en route in an ambulance. There was no functional hospital nearby enough to save him in time. This is Dr. Samar Riyad al farra She is a young, healthy woman in her 20s who had just finished her post-doctorate. Um, she completed her post-doctorate. She died in the evacuation camps in Rafah from a respiratory infection when her health deteriorated suddenly and she was unable to obtain medical treatment. My cousin, 30-year-old Salma al farra with chronic kidney disease who was dialysis dependent died because she could not access I wanted to share with you this, this slide. This is a picture of Salma al farra who died because she couldn't access her dialysis treatments. As a physician, I am particularly appalled by the loss of life from medical conditions that could have been in any other circumstances readily treatable. In the Western world, this would constitute the standard of care and anything less would be considered unacceptable. So the women and children in my family continue to be subjected to the most severe and unimaginable psychological and emotional trauma. There are literally, they are literally waiting to die, living in an endless state of terror and despair. The following is a text sent to a cousin of mine in Virginia by his cousin in Northern Gaza. He wrote, horror, horror, we were bombed in all forms and even with all of our experience with years of being bombed, this was new. All we could do was just pray continuously until morning. And for all of our attempts to shelter the kids, they were crying and afraid all night. There are also multiple stories from family fleeing at the orders of the Israeli military from the north to south that convey pure terror. One family member texted, quote, we tried to flee to the southern part of Gaza as the Israeli military was forcing us to do so, but we couldn't even do that. The situation is very difficult with thousands of people attempting to flee, overcrowding roads and intersections. Women, children, and the elderly are carrying the little they could carry and walking up to 20 miles before reaching the southern parts of Gaza. Parents have posted names and pictures of children that they have been separated from, asking for assistance in locating them. And here I show some social media pictures on the left list of names in our family of children who have se been separated from their parents, asking if anybody could find them and help locate them. And on the right is a picture of a disabled child who has been lost by their parents 
and asking for help, assistance in locating this child. Women and children have witnessed brutal massacres of their loved ones and horrific injuries all around them. One cousin reported that his brother Wa'an had to witness our own mother with half of her body buried under the rubble and his sister Wafat shredded into pieces. Mothers in our family have watched the murder of all of their children and children have become orphans after witnessing the murder of their parents. Here are a few posts, a few pictures of babies who, uh, whose pictures have been posted because um, they have been killed by massacres and their parents um, have lost their children. Here's um, a picture of two children Parents in our family lost their only two children and posted their pictures. My first cousin, Dr. Muna al fadra pictured here on the left. She is a dentist and the mother of three young children. She was widowed in October when her husband was killed in an Israeli missile strike on his car while driving to check on his parents because he hadn't heard from them. Her social media posts have provided a window into her intense pain and suffering. She has written several, I've shared a slide here, but I'm gonna read one of her posts. She writes, it's not goodbye, my love. A farewell is not suitable for us because you are alive with me every moment. And I am a believer. I swear that I am waiting to meet you as if it were a little while. No, no, please no, don't say goodbye. Her eight-year-old daughter, Hasna, wrote a heart-wrenching letter to her father stating, quote, my dad is the greatest dad. I will still tell you all of my secrets, daddy. I miss you, my mom, my brother, and my little sister miss you, and we will never forget you. Mothers and fathers in our family are experiencing profound distress as they are unable to help their children who are crying from hunger and thirst, nor are they able to protect their children from the dangers of Israeli aggression. Women and children are psychologically exhausted. Coping mechanisms have been eroded. My, my first cousin posts regularly on social media about her psychological devastation. Here's a quote from her. No one asks for aid to Gaza. We need to stand up for the war. While we are losing the people, we are not a game. This, we are not a game between you. We are human beings. Have mercy on us, O world. We have no mercy on us. Every hour we lose, some, we lose someone dear to us, our lands and houses. The disease is a form. We do not need aid to buy from the market. We do not need to go down for aid and we need someone to treat us. The diseases have increased. Don't talk only about the broken hearts of people. I swear we are dying. Given the severity of the war crimes committed against them, my family will be plagued for generations to come, not only with physical scars or lost limbs of the survivors, but also deep-seated psychological wounds, including PTSD, depression, suicide, and profound disability. The entire fabric of my family's life in Gaza has been brutally dismantled by Israel's demolition of Gaza, including the complete destruction of their educational, healthcare, and legal systems. Almost all schools and universities have been completely decimated. My heart was broken when I heard that my first cousin's eight-year-old niece recently asked her aunt who lives in California if she could please send her some crayons from the United States because all of her school supplies were struck, were stuck under the rubble of her destroyed home. All education of children and young adults has ceased, profoundly impairing the mental, developmental, and psychological well-being of all children of Gaza. The future implications of this complete annihilation of our social infrastructure, education in particular by Israel, unfortunately will haunt generations of lessons to come. Tragically, these stories are only a glimpse into the horror and the devastation that has been inflicted upon the Alfara family over the last five months by Israeli aggression. The lives of women and children in my family have been completely shattered with profound and devastating consequences on their safety, psychological well-being, general and reproductive health, food security, education, and family structures.